was your first season here in Vancouver? How would you characterize it? How did you find it here in Vancouver? Beautiful. Vancouver, um, <clears throat> almost like the same when we travel for away games and come to Vancouver and play. You know, you see this, you know, this city sitting in the water and just no matter if it's raining or not raining, it's just so beautiful. And uh, that's really how it's been since I've been here. It's been all smiles. I've enjoyed, you know, living where I'm living and getting out with the kids and going to the beach and, you know, exploring the city a little bit. And obviously coming in here and playing soccer. I mean, it, nothing can beat that. I had really group, great group of guys around me and all that. And no matter if they were down, I was trying to inject some kind of energy into them to get, you know, some some kind of positivity of whatever the situation was. And uh, it really was what I expected it to be. You know, when I got the phone call saying you're coming to Vancouver and I just expected it to be a really, really good year, fun year, short of a championship, but definitely I still appreciate every moment I spent here. Has the team shown any, at any part of the season in regards to bringing you back next season, has there been any discussions or any involvement there? I think I think the the fans do that. The fans tell me how much they love me every day. You know, whether it's on social media or game days, um, it's 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 been that. And with the players, I mean, when I'm in the locker room, when I'm around the the players and playing, I I can feel that. I can feel the energy that you know people want you around. Not one of those places where you know it's time for you to move on. They don't want to see you. But, um, and, uh, and hopefully people from the front office feels the same way. So, you know, right now we can't judge that. We can't judge any of that because it's a, it's a point of the season where they have to look through the roster and look through, you know, I don't know, finances and see, you know, what players are coming back and who's not coming back. What's your priority at this stage of your career? Is it stability for your family? Is it, you know, money for the college fund for the kids? Is it winning a championship? Yeah, going to college. <laughs> if they do, they're getting scholarships. <laughs> you know, I think, I think my athleticism would definitely go. No, I'm joking. Um, no, nah, I'm not. I'm not worried. I'm not worried about that so much. Again, to me, man, I'll give, I'll give, I'll give all hundred plus goals just to get in you know, MLS Cup because it's a league that I've played at for so long, and and that's the one thing I didn't get. And there's guys that only played a season and got the MLS Cup. So, yes, you know, money's good and everybody's playing for something, you know. But if I put my focus on that and that's what I want to play for, then, I mean, I could have played in other places. I could have stayed in England, you know, but I came back to the league knowing the fact of what I want, you know. I want to be in a place where I'm appreciated. I want to be in a place where I'm connected to the people, the fans, on and off the field. And when I feel that, then I feel at home. You know, I did really well when I was in <clears throat> in Kansas City um, because I fell at home. You know, I connected with the fans and all that. Um, not so much when I was in Columbus because it was only half a season, really. But since I've been here, I feel like I've been here longer. I mean, I play with a kid that I've only known since I've been here. And I feel like I've been part of, you know, the Alfonso Davis story since he first walked into this club. So that's how, it, you know, it really feels when I, you know, when I'm around this club. I hope you talked about just love playing the game and love playing with the guys around you. Russell just came in here, Daniel came in here, and they talked about the fact that there wasn't enough guys who played for the crest. You knew how important it was to rep the white caps, to be a white cap. He talked about a great divide in the locker room. He said it cannot happen again next year. Did you see this? Did you notice this? Um, what, what, what do you say about going forward in 2019? That's, uh, that's two Canadians that you mentioned, so yeah, I know. I don't know how come they, they both rhymed when they both talked about something, but uh, <laughs> they, you're going to have that in locker rooms. You're going to have that. You know, Some people are going to give it their all for you know, the crest. Like I said you know, to me, I told you guys that when I play, I love playing for teams that the people support the team not the players, not the coaches, but they love that team because the team represents their city. So, and when I feel that, I feel like I'm part of that city. I feel like I'm part of that team. And uh, 
But you're going to have that in, in every team and every place that you play where maybe you do feel like one or two players, you know, didn't give it your all. But whoever is going to say somebody didn't give it their all, that's a still the energy that you can inject into those people that you think are not giving it. Because, again, that's my personality in the locker room. When I feel like people were down, when I feel like, you know, uh, people were sleepy and this, and I'm just really loud because I'm trying to wake everybody else up. And that's why I'm doing it. So I'm not going to come to the end of the season and say, okay, my, you know, season ended the way it did because, you know, A, B, and C didn't give it their all. They didn't really care about the crest. They didn't really do that. And that's, you know, that's not how I do it. You know, how I do is I'm loud as hell in that locker room. I'm loud in the game. I'm always loud until I'm really annoying. <clears throat> but I'm only doing it for one reason, because I want all of us to succeed. Loud with more players on this team and on other sides that you played for. Did you have to pick more guys up? Did you have to be that guy? No, I think I think uh, um, I was just at the point, you know, where it's different than where I played last year. You know, being in New England, um, played there, I loved it. Again, I can't take back of playing for any club that I play for because everywhere you get the opportunity to play, I'm still a professional. I'm still playing, but the connection that I had with people here was so much different the players. So no matter when it was guys are not having a good day, guys are not having something, that I was always up to make make sure that, you know, everybody was was up for it. Because being up for it just helped us all out. And there was, you know, sparks of the season where we showed it. You know, we're going all oh, six, seven games unbeaten and doing all that. And that was good. But it's always gonna come to a point where, you know, one or two people are gonna fall asleep. And it's hard to have, you know, maybe one or two guys to pick everybody else up. But when you have a core of guys, you know, five, six on the soccer team, then it definitely does help to pick, you know, the rest of the guys up. So having, you know, a Russell on the team who's one of the leaders, been here for 10 years, you know, and uh, he, he, he's a good guy. He leads by example. You know, there's guys like me that leads by, you know, the way I talk, also example. But Russell, he's a guy that works. When you see him working, he makes you want to work. And so you need more of those people around you, you know, to keep a, a good team. In 2006, it looks wildly different than the one that happens now, that exists now. And the sort of the intrigue over Columbus's future was a part of that, those discussions this season. What do you think of the state of the league and where it's headed? Uh, the league is growing. Uh, everybody says that. Uh, it's one thing I'm going to say, but whatever, I'm going to say it. Everybody says the league is growing, but as the league grows, the referees have to grow. That's the one big thing about this league. You know, these decisions we're waiting for VAR to make for us and blah, blah, blah. We see other leagues and they're, they're using VARs, but it's so much better. It takes like five seconds for them to decide what's happening. You know, but we're, we can't be looking at the league. Even before me, the league has been around for so long. But yeah, from 2006 on, how much the league have grown, fans have grown, stadiums, new stadiums and everything. And every, everyone is saying all these good things about MLS. MLS is going all around the world. But then it's so, you know, it's bad officiating. Then that's not helping the growth of the league. So, yes, MLS is growing. And, yes, the players know that. And it's harder even for players to come. A lot of people are calling me all the time. How, I want to come play in MLS. Players that's playing in England and playing, you know, in Spain and all these places. How can I get to MLS? I say, it's really hard now, you know, but then when I'm sitting at home and watching the game and something happens and these guys are officiating games and it's, it's not, you know, good enough, that's not helping the growth of the league. And that's how I see it. Uh, you mentioned that the fans have been really good and showing you love and wanting you back next year. I just wanted to uh, recap on the highlights that you've had this year, especially the one where the fans made a banner for you and they all wore the jerseys with your name on it. How did that make you feel that day? Uh, that was amazing. Uh, actually, I was just given that banner that they made for me for my birthday. And uh, you've been places. And me, to me, I've played in so many clubs. The connection with the fans, the connection with the city means everything to me because... After the end of it, yes, I'm going to score goals. I know I'm going to score goals. That's a pressure that I put on myself because I'm not going to have fun if we're not winning. And if we're winning, if I'm the striker, the tough striker, I need to score goals. If I'm not scoring, help the team somehow. But when you feel that from the fans, when they did that, you know, Sierra Leone jerseys all around on my birthday, and it didn't just make an impact 
to my life, but in Sierra Leone and Sierra Leoneans all around the world started posting that picture and started talking about Vancouver and the fans in Vancouver and they look at the love that they've shown our brother, you know, Kai and the Sierra Leone flag with the heart shaped hands like flying like so it's not just about me if they were just thinking, okay, we're doing this for Kai. At the end of the day, it went around so many Sierra Leoneans all around, not just in Sierra Leone, but all around the world, just talking about, look at those fans and what they did for him. Sky, what was your best uh, game, the most memorable of the season for yourself and the team? The, the last game of the season. Seriously, the last game of the season. I could say the first game of the season because I scored my first goal for the club. Uh, but also the last game of the season was definitely memorable. Um, again, it's against Portland. You know, I told the guys in the locker room when we were walking out, the season is is done, but this is still a game against Portland. When you play Portland and Seattle, like that's it's a big game, and we know that. So yes, we have to finish this game strong. It doesn't matter what lineup they put, and having that last game being, you know, again a farewell game for Alfonso Davis. That's that means so much to this club, to this city, to this fans, and then introducing another kid onto the field, you know, Simon. And to me, I was I was just really happy to be part of that. Like I said, I could be here next year. I could, maybe I'm not. But to say that I was part of that day for that farewell for that one kid and the introduction for another one that I, you know, hopefully believe that something good's gonna come out for it. Then, you know, I'm I'm proud of that day. Yeah. Voila. Thanks, guys. Merci beaucoup. You guys have a good holiday. <laughs>